from the Green Room Studios at Bates Nursery in Nashville, Tennessee, it's Gardening Inside Out, a podcast with highlights from our Saturday morning live show, answering all your gardening questions, giving you plant advice for any space in your life. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody. Caroline Gant here. Hello, everybody. Austin Lowen here. Hey, it's Tyler. What's up? Tyler, you have such a sultry voice today. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. Oh, it's because wow. you're, you're, you're kind of, it's in your nose today, isn't it? A little, That's right. Yeah. Allergies. Yeah. Yes. The winter is coming. It is. It's coming it is. for it's my coming nose. quickly. Mm. Everybody's got that itch. You know what they got the itch for? What? To cut stuff. Yes. They do. They absolutely have the itch to cut stuff. Coming but... out the woodwork. All the mm-hmm. time questions about cutting stuff. And you know... It's not like rocket science all that much. There's better times to prune than other times or whatever. But, like, you know, if a big established shrub is, like, getting out of control, pretty much any time of year you can cut that. All right. I mean, if it's, like, in your walkway or, like, hitting you on the way in to your front door or something, like, you got to cut it. Okay. That's true. People get scared about cutting stuff. In houseplants, people are always like, am I going to kill a plant? Am I going to hurt it? Mm -hmm. No. Usually plants recover very well if not better than they were before. I find it to be very healthy to prune your plants. As the third person in this conversation, I just have to approach (laughs) this from, number one, it feels like, and maybe some other people identify with me here. Maybe, Maybe I'm the guy that is your voice right now. But it feels like each plant, to me, has its own pruning requirements or like method. And I get too in my head about it. (laughs) And I know the fact that, like, yes, you gotta, you can pay attention to the nodes or you can just cut it (laughs) because eventually a node will sprout new growth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But if I cut it, it's gonna sprout new growth in different places, maybe not where I want it. Exactly. It's not just gonna, you know, when I cut my banana trees down, they just grow right back from the same stalk again, like it's magic. Mm -hmm. So, They're pretty incredible. I mean, those are growing machines. Mm -hmm. Um, They are. A good point, though, to make with this is that, you know, most of your biggest nurseries out there, say one of the biggest in the country, Monrovia, who we all know is probably the biggest wholesaler of plants in the country, they don't have people prune their plants anymore at all. It's all, like, mechanized. They can prune, like, thousands of plants in, like, minutes. That's mechanized pruning? Yes, and it's all, it's like a big, more or less, like, over the top lawnmower that goes over top of all the shrubs and it cuts each one of them exactly the same way. That's how they're always so uniform, though. Very uniform, and that's what you get when you prune plants, especially properly, is that you get uniformity. Mm -hmm. Well, how do they do that without, like, whacking the wood of the stem and splintering it? Well, they do to an extent do that. But, yes, they are ultra sharp, and it's, like, high tech, man. I mean, this is, like, you know... And the biggest plant producers in the country, they've got to, they can't be pruning thousands of things with just men. So they've figured out a way to get around that. And it's pretty incredible to watch. I think you can even see it online. I want to say there's videos from Monrovia that like show how they do that. I imagine. I've seen it. I know they have robots that move the little pots around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pot bots. Uh huh. And I think a lot of that stuff is Pot like bots. Dutch, is like Dutch made because the Dutchmen yeah. know so much more about plants than us. They're so much better than I know. Americans. There's so we, a lot to we they take grow, plants, They can though. grow tulips. Definitely. They well, can, they can do make that. cool machines. <laughs> they can code semi-okay websites. Mm-hmm. They like, can do a lot. It's true. Mm-hmm. But you can all do a lot in pruning your plants. Mm-hmm. It, it keeps, can be done. But Tyler, you're right. I mean, every plant has a certain way it does want to be pruned. And it takes it takes some knowledge and some learning to know how to properly prune stuff. But, I mean, I've cut stuff almost all the way back to the dirt as far as, like, ficus goes. And they will they will come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The growth habit ficus. might just be a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, for instance, I cut back my jasmine and my um, mandevilla, and I just kind of did my best to get back to where it'd be about between six to eight inches. Proud of you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel best. like I want to go to the dirt with it. Do like, it. And See I probably happens. could. And I want to make it more bushy, you know, because mm-hmm. it, it, it got leggy. And that's that's another thing that I do appreciate about pruning is... Mm-hmm. You can take back the legginess. Cut the leg yes, out. You can, you can you reclaim cut the it. Leg out. I know. <laughs> cut it. Uh-huh. But you're right. I'm getting we, into it now. If you if you take that man to be all the way to the dirt, it'll send up you know usually sucker sprouts. So it will be a more bushy habit plant when you do that. Mm-hmm. 
So it's it's good practice to do it. Just do it. Just do it, Tyler. Just do it. I have done it already. All right, cool. Have I'll, you cut it back all I the way to the ground? More. Though? No. <laughs> well, I, I, it's in my greenhouse right now. Like, That's what true. if it keeps growing a little bit? All right, then well, cut what? it. If what? it keeps growing, cut it again. Oh. Just keep cutting it. Mm-hmm. I love cutting stuff and I seeing what happens. I do too. I'm a experimental gardener. I've killed a lot too, but I think every gardener is kind are. of an experimental gardener. You know, if you actually do garden and really care for yeah. it, like you're experimenting all the time with your. Sometimes you're like, oh, should I do that? And then you do it, and you're like, huh, glad I did that. Or I'm like, huh, wish I didn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have done it. <laughs> yeah, didn't I didn't have done do that. that. Uh huh. I mean, I just have to be that voice for people who are like, I don't want to experiment. <laughs> I want. I want to, to know, know exactly how what to I'm do doing it. and what I'm cutting. I get it. And I get it. It gets expensive. It does, and I guess I should. There is a little bit of a disclaimer, especially with like flowering shrubs. That's kind of the biggest thing we worry about with pruning techniques, and it's mainly with hydrangea. If you know me at all, you know I love hydrangea, and there's like you know five or six different species we sell here, and they kind of have to be cut at a right time, or you won't get that bloom cycle that you really want. So knowledge with hydrangeas is is certainly power for you, because if you don't, you won't get flower power. Okay, and that's what we're all here for. <laughs> that's what especially I'm here you. for. Flower power, of course. Yep. So, yep, there's some certain things you got to know. But for the most part, if it's loud and hairy and unruly, just give it a haircut. Just cut a haircut. Just cut it on back. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to hear us talk a little bit more about pruning in this episode and a lot of other things. So let's go ahead and get into it from our Saturday, November 4th broadcast. All right. So let's go with, uh, you guys got anything you want to put out there before we get to the questions? Mm. Ooh, we got our first shipment of holiday plants in. Not poinsettias yet. Thank you. I'm not ready for those, but we did get Christmas cactus and Norfolk Island pine. So we have had a lot of questions about Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving cactus coming in, and they are here and they are going fast. I have to keep rearranging them. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. It's a sign that the holidays are upon us. And the zygote cactus, you know, which are commonly labeled Kris Kringle is the cultivar name that is most commonly associated Mm. with those. And they are indeed a zygo cactus they're not sure actually they, uh-huh. uh, a real cactus yes not a true cactus they, they is are there a succulent. krampus cactus mm, it's just not a real there cactus. there should be a krampus we can cactus. we can make one okay there should be one okay but yeah like david said not a true cactus they don't like a lot of direct sunlight and if they get too much they'll turn uh red and then brown yeah. that's how you know yeah. that they're and not if, getting the ideal sunlight. And if they get chilled, they'll drop all the buds. Yes, they will. They and absolutely will. Also, do you have true. any housekeeping? Any housekeeping? Yeah. Uh, any things to talk about, about the nursery? About the nursery? Uh, this week was a heavy week. 14 trucks, right? Yeah, like something ridiculous. We, we Our inventory is huge right now. I mean, plenty to look at. We had a tree truck come in. Lots of bald and, and burlap uh, out there this week. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got we got a lot of uh, heavy, heavy trees. <laughs> you know, Me and seemed, Pedro. You know, it seems like it has taken us this long into the season to ever get to a point where we feel like and where it looks like we are fully stocked. Speaking of all the inventory that Austin was talking about bringing in, if you noticed, he talked about we had a huge tree truck. We have a ton of shrubs on the lot. We have a lot of B&B. And right now, I would say the most popular question we're getting is, is it too late to plant? (laughs) So if you're listening to what we're talking about, we're getting all these trucks in. Absolutely not. It's not too late to plant. We wouldn't be getting all these plants in if it was. So. And, and, and let's see, make one small uh, uh, explanation. When you use the term B&B, some people may not understand what what does that mean. That means bald and burlap, mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. as opposed to container grown. Now, and There's a ball covered with burlap. Yeah. This is the time of year when bald and burlap plants are uh, wonderfully yes. favorable because there's no transplant shock while they're dormant. And you know, this just in. We've had freezing temperatures this week. Mm-hmm. Things have what? gotten well into dormancy, so people can uh, really begin to expand their horizons with respect to, hey, I've got this plant in my yard that I have had in the wrong spot, and I've been waiting mm-hmm. to get it transplanted to the right spot. Is it too late? It's no. not too late. No. Not too late. <laughs> so, All Josh, right, Josh. Now to you, Josh. <laughs> uh, this is a Smyrna person. Has come out that narrows it down. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. okay. Risha. Hi, Risha. <laughs> uh, our Japanese Risha. maples has tall shoots coming out of the top. For fall and winter, do we prune these? 
If you don't like them, then yes, Cut you them. can prune them. Yeah. Because, yeah, Japanese maples do have a way of doing that in the fall sometimes. There's a lot, a lot of plants that will do that and send some random shoots up mm -hmm. uh, late in the fall. And if it's aesthetically displeasing to you, then most certainly you it's can cut It's obviously those. driving her crazy. Mm -hmm. If it's driving you crazy, then, yeah. yeah, you can take them. And it's getting to the point now where most Japanese maples have pretty well lost most of their leaves. Um, I would to find let it, right? you or tell you to wait until they really drop all their leaves, kind of let them finish up, and then prune them to shape. Uh, well, you, you know, in the, in the, this time you, you kind of shape your Japanese maple. So, and, and there's no benefit to cutting those out completely. There's no reason to, no. I mean, unless they are a crossing branch or something. So, mm -hmm. you know, just as you say, get them back down to the to even them up with the with the rest of the canopy. Mm -hmm. She's a very orderly person. So let's stick on the Japanese maple topic. We do mm -hmm. have another question on that. Um, advice for keeping small potted Japanese maple alive this winter. Mm. I have a couple in pots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they Japanese seem to do well. Are great in pots. They really are. Got to water. We should get mm -hmm. old. We should get old Sam. Old Sam. Sam Boyette. You out there? You listening? We ought to get him on the phone because he's got. How many do you think he has? He's got a number of of potted Japanese maples, and and I'm not sure he really does anything over the winter time to keep them alive. I mean, they're the Japanese maples are plenty cold hardy. If you're if you're worried a little bit about them, they let them go dormant and then put them in like a shed or. Or a garage or something, you know. A, a deciduous plant does not need light over the winter time. So, if you need to put it in and protect it from those really freezing temps or whatever, you know, keep an eye on the weather. But for the most part, you don't really have to do much. You know, keep it somewhat moist but not wet, mm -hmm. and they'll generally be fine in a yeah, pot. Yeah, somewhat counterintuitive uh, for many who have Japanese maple in containers. The cold weather. Uh, threat coming into winter is decidedly less threatening to them than uh, the weather coming into spring. If you've had, uh, you're still in winter, maybe you've had enough weather to get them juiced up where they're and starting, you, and then you have a hammer freeze. Now, that can be devastating yeah. to them. So, mm -hmm. uh, But on this end of the scale, even last year, uh, we've got a, a dissectum, you know, a lace leaf type Japanese maple in a container in front of our house. We only watered it, and you know we had a sixty degree drop in temperatures one day, Bang. and it was fine. Did yeah. not, it, I, to my knowledge, it did not even have a single limb that died on it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as you said, Austin, they're quite tough. It's more on the springtime end that you need to be mindful of. Yeah. Yes. The only time I. <sighs> I've killed a couple Japanese maple. I think a few were not my fault. They got something. Uh, but the potted ones, I, I've lost two of them, and the only time during the year that they died was summer. So just be mindful and be hmm. thought, thoughtful of your plants, particularly those that are in containers. They will likely need additional water as we go through the winter season when you would not typically be thinking about it. Just as much as anything, be prepared to water. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the thing that's most likely... Uh, will create problems for you in your landscape. So there's that. <laughs> Watering. All right, so crepe myrtle, that's a hot topic, I feel like, for us in the winter. So the crepe myrtle questions are starting to come in. The first one we have says, can you cut back crepe myrtle to the ground every year? I like the result from the freeze. Well, hmm. that's funny. Uh, <laughs> we haven't heard that a lot. Most people yeah, were most, really upset with the freeze. Yeah, whenever they lose the stems up top. Um, yeah, you can certainly cut back crepe myrtle to the dirt every single year if you want to. Now, what you're going to get every year is a shrub yep. crepe myrtle. You know, so if it's like a tree form crepe myrtle, you know, one that gets fairly large, you're going to see like a probably you know if you cut it to the ground, you're going to see shoots emerge from the ground up, and it'll be multi stemmed, and it will look shrubby. And it'll get literally roughly about six, seven feet tall by the end of the season and bloom heavily atop of that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that if you want to do it. Um, you know, we talk about uh, uh, Dr. Lincoln, who is a, a good friend of ours who's worked at our nursery and uh, been a landscaper for, what, 30, 40 years or whatever. And he's retired oh. now. But he talks about back in the day, back like 30 years ago, they used to cut crepe myrtle to the dirt every single year because it, it, was, it was a little cooler over the wintertime. So they didn't even plan for the for the crepe myrtle to come back from its stems at all. They just had it come back from the ground every year. So yeah, his maintenance was literally go out and cut every crepe myrtle to the dirt wow. and watch it regrow from the roots and then bloom atop of that. So the second question we have about crepe myrtles is pretty much just the opposite of what was just <laughs> asked. Can I cut back my crepe myrtles? Not severely now. 
and just the tops and suckers, not the stems with berries on them. Hmm. Uh, so up. those berries are, are its seeds, and yes, obviously you can do this. You definitely take sucker sprouts if you want. You want it to be tree form. You want to keep those stems you want to keep. Uh, but I do recommend shortening them, yes, and the, and the stems that do have the seeds on them, um, if you remove, if you go down a little bit past those seeds, you know, if, if you just want to do it minimally or whatever, then go down below those seeds and go ahead and top those seeds off of there. If you get those away, uh, you have a much better bloom set next year. Um, so I do recommend taking those. You don't yep. want to leave those seeds on. Yeah, plants only have X amount of energy, however much energy any plant has, and it's going towards the production of something. Mm -hmm. And if you leave seeds on there, it's going towards that uh, feeding energy to the seed production. So getting those off, if you're not interested in collecting seed, and I don't really know anyone who grows crepe myrtle from seed. <laughs> nah. You know, what's funny I've often thought about with crepe myrtle is that, like, a crepe myrtle has such an extensive root system. So what we were talking about earlier, like, if you cut it to the dirt, it's coming right back, okay? If you try to dig it up and, and you want to remove a crepe myrtle, like, you're going to see crepe myrtles popping back up. Like, they're vigorous from their root system. Mm -hmm. But for some reason... They send a million seeds out, but you rarely see crepe myrtle just like volunteering and popping up. I just wonder, wonder why that is. You know, and they're equally difficult to propagate. They're, you know, they're extremely woody, mm -hmm. and uh, it requires pretty sophisticated propagation techniques, mist beds, mm -hmm. uh, very closely timed, the right medium, the right uh, rooting hormone. Uh, obviously, they are being successfully done, but it's not one of those things that is d well done by neophytes. Gardening Inside Out is brought to you by Earth Mix Garden Products, creating regionally sourced high-quality soil blends and amendments for the sustainable-minded gardener. Fall and winter are great times to plant in the southeast, and Earth Mix can help you with landscape soil conditioner. Mix landscape with your native soil to feed all winter long. Added mycorrhizal fungi help your plants get established faster and increase hardiness through the year ahead. Visit earthmix.net for more information and retailers near you. Remember, success begins at the ground level when you use Earth Mix garden products. So let's stick on the pruning topic because we do have a lot of questions about when and how to cut stuff back. So we have a question about Annabelle hydrangeas. They're saying their Annabelle hydrangeas are toast. Is it time to cut them back yet? Yes, it can be. It, it, we're, we're to the point now. They're not going to regrow you know, new leaves at this point or anything. They're pretty well dormant. I've got incredible hydrangea at the house. Y'all probably know this. Uh, my favorite hydrangeas by far and yeah mine look the same there you know the the blooms are totally brown the leaves are wilty and they took a hit from this last freeze so they're they're pretty well done but if don't you, you love go, that look though no. I, I, I actually do I, yeah see, i've got annabelle's which is you know the more of the original cultivar that the incredible was derived from mm -hmm. I'm, and I've got them. They're in a uh, a diamond or in a triangle planting configuration where there's ten plants close together, and they all are one big mass. And I I love the look of the persistent dried flowers at the end of the season. I, and mm -hmm. you can really maintain that throughout the winter. Winter. So you while you can cut them, you don't have to cut them. Yeah. And I, I like the look. And then cut them back pretty much to the ground mm -hmm. in springtime and because they do flower on the current year's growth, not the previous year. So there's no threat to um, delaying the flowers at all. Cut them, the new growth will come out and they'll be uh, wonderfully flowering. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say that like 95% of pruning is based on your aesthetic. Yes. Like how much do you like it? People ask me about like mm -hmm. grasses, like when to cut back grasses. Some people absolutely hate to see a brown grass up through the winter time. I, like love it. I almost like it better. I like it better, too. Me, too. I, I mm -hmm. used to back in the day. I, I didn't like that near as much. But as I've grown the grasses, I like to see them up in like that tan color mm. through the wintertime. Some people hate it. So they 
So like I said, it, it, either you cut it now to the dirt or you cut it in the early spring to the dirt. Either way, you're going to cut it. And all those things, those elements in the landscape, uh, when the wind blows, it creates movement. Uh-huh. It's, it's mm-hmm. a lot of uh, wonderful effects that come out of it. So the, the dance hands, like you'd like to talk about. Oh, the jazz hands. Yeah, jazz, jazz hands, jazz. <laughs> sorry. <yeah. laughs> well, you get all your, you get the full effect of all the ploofies when you when you leave the grasses up through the yes, wind. You yes, do. you do. Yes. Yes. But then Technical. Like, but then like hydrangeas, like the same way, like my incredible types and you uh-huh. know, for a minute, I can deal with those being up, and I can look at that. But when the leaves start to look so yeah. bad, and, and it's, it I, I can't stand it anymore, so then I go in there and I really clean them up and I prune them how I want to. I open them up. I get this great vase shape that I'm after. I get the stems all uniform, and then after that, I really like that look too of a cleaned up, pruned up shrub scenario. You are the, the cleanest gardener I know. Well, by the way, for the most part. Mm. I can get it, it depends. It could get messy sometimes. Sometimes, but then I, just I go mean in your and clean aesthetic. it up. It's just so clean. Stuff I do will want annoy stuff you and you're like, I gotta clean this up right now. But don't we have a did we do a video on Austin cutting back his uh incredible hydrangeas? We did. We so sure it is did. out there it's on out the there. internet. On the YouTube. Y'all, mm-hmm. y'all At the end of it, it looked YouTube. very clean. You got to see my dog. My dog was laying down next to me Woof. as I was pruning it. Oh yeah, we did a time lapse of uh-huh. you cleaning it. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I leaf blue below it to get all the leaf debris out of there. See, cleanest gardener. I do ever. like to be clean. So we it's still have Austin. questions about mm-hmm. pruning. We're going to take a shift to uh, like flower pruning, herb pruning. We have a question about lemongrass. What do I do to my lemongrass to prepare for cold weather? <laughs> Trimming? I mean, my lemongrass always gets taken out real fast. It does not uh, overwinter. Last here. rites, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, but. Santo, Santo, you can, Santo. what I have done with the past, because I do use mine for cooking, I will, I mean, if it's still alive right now, I'm not sure if it is. I didn't plant any this year. Uh, I will tie off the whole. Uh, you know, make a ponytail out of that grass, tie it off, cut it, and then hang it in my kitchen, and then I will use it to cook with. But they get so huge over the mm. over the summer. It is yeah, it smells amazing, but mm. it's wild. But no, it's it's not going to last if you're here in Middle Tennessee. So there's not much to prepare for. No lemon, yeah, like you just said, lemongrass is not hardy here in, in our zone. We kind of got, got a question from Sheila, and I'm, I'm going to read this the way she wrote it because it's confusing me just a little bit. She says, her, my coral bells come survive all year long. I don't know whether we're asking if, if that's just a typo where she says they will survive or can survive, uh, but they're starting to look a little tired. Should they be cut back or replaced? Uh, I leave mine up all winter. Some of mine stay up and some of them die all the way back to the ground. I do have a little bit of freeze burn on the new growth um, on all of mine right now, which I'll probably just pick off because it's annoying to look at. But I just let mine stay up through the winter, however they look, because some of them look great. Again, some of them die back, but they always come back from the ground. So there's no need to replace them. Yeah, don't replace them. No, no, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't. I but do them clean so them up. Yeah. Like Caroline said, if they have a nasty leaf that looks bad or it's spotty or whatever, like take that leaf off. It bugs me so much. <laughs> We've if already he, talked about yeah, it. Yeah, if Austin gardener. comes by your house and he sees that, you know, he needs to come by my house, man. Yeah. I could use clean some help up this your afternoon, bed. Uh-huh. I would. Okay. Additional support for Gardening Inside Out is brought to you by Bates Nursery and Garden Center, a third-generation nursery located in Nashville, Tennessee, and 20-time recipient for Nashville's Best Garden Center, offering the widest selection of new arrivals for fall, like specimen conifers, Japanese maples, and pansies in nearly every color. Open year-round, minutes from the heart of Nashville in beautiful Whites Creek, Tennessee. Browse their selection online anytime at BatesNursery.com. Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Beautifying Nashville since 1932. Pam Eldridge says, my husband is the cleanest and uh, it drives me crazy. I want to leave all the dried hydrangeas, <laughs> but my husband does not plant wars. Who? <laughs> wow. well, yeah, David, what are the two operative words in this situation? Well, it is yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> but 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 she's the one who should be being seeded to. You know? it does, it, hey, whichever direction. Uh, uh, yes, dear. So, so have your husband cut those plants and then have him bring them to you inside the home and you make it's a fabulous arrangement. Oh, no. It's not She can make a great arrangement. Arrangement inside the house. Now you, you know you can't. Yeah, you can't spray those dried flowers with some like uh, 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 
sealer, some yeah. kind of a clear sealer, and that will make them hold together because, you know, as they start uh, drying completely, they start shedding off That's badly. True. So, But know, they just look so nice they outside yes. in your landscaping. They you do, but, yeah. I'm a huge fan of leaving them. Mm-hmm. This, mm-hmm. You don't That's, seem like you are. Well, you just seem so the, disappointed. I'm not disappointed. I'm 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 like the husband here. I am. I'm the same way. I don't <laughs> like to necessarily see that either for too long. For a little bit, I can be behind it. But when it starts to get too far off, I, I got to cut those things too. But y'all, you hear him use, over here talking. <laughs> you hear him? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm curious if there's not a double standard that he has in his garden somewhere. That maybe there's something that's. <laughs> <laughs> Defoliated, and maybe he's left. That's so okay. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say what. I'm uh, just curious. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Don't go there this morning. Uh, oh, it's there. Uh, uh, I didn't say it. I didn't uh, say anything. Uh, no. I said nothing. Well, okay. you know what though? That's when just it's real scary quick. Is when they quit talking. Isn't it, right, baby? Uh, oh. Oh. The silence is <laughs> deafening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Austin, what? Uh, look, real quick, just making an interesting fall bouquet inside your home. Use some sticks around the yard. Use some old leaves. Use some of your grasses that are still up. Play with those things. We don't always have to use a flower arrangement to make a pretty arrangement. Use True. other things. That's a okay? good point. True. Or right. leave them up in your garden beds. Yes. <laughs> All right. I bet everyone's wondering, is there anything around town that... You know, has color or looks cool. Don't even push the button, Tyler, because no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything this week. We had what? our first. <laughs> there you go. Say no. We're not even doing it. Do we it. had three days of. What? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's it. There. No. Nope, there you go. Your uh, your your pansies are blooming. There you go. If you don't have pansies. <laughs> You better get them. No, I don't have anything that's really blooming right now. We got a lot of seeds. It's a lot oh. of seed heads. Well, yeah. Caroline, how many how many rudbeckia seeds do you yeah. have right oh, now? Oh, so many. All yeah. the ornamental so grasses? Or, oh, you know, yeah, those are still going. Them. There you go. The grasses, actually, yeah, the grasses didn't really even get affected. The seeds especially didn't no. get affected at all mm-hmm. by all. the cold temps. So there you go. Your grasses are blooming. Bring some of those in for a bouquet. Mm-hmm. Make yeah, a bouquet. Yeah, you know, there are always a plethora of uh, items like you're talking about, Austin, that you can collect out of the yard and perhaps just add a uh, cut flower or two from that you might have to buy this time of year. But mm-hmm. you can make some really attractive arrangements for the house using largely things, or maybe entirely things you have in your garden, uh, and or perhaps only adding a few little. Tidbits of things here and there. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what's a good one is if you got some old school Nandina. Oh, which yeah. with berries oh. on Nandina. It. But the berries on Nandina are great yeah. for fall slash winter arrangements. I don't like that. Carolina, I know you don't like that plant. Hardly any of us like that plant. But a lot of people grow it because it lives. It's evergreen. It's got color. It's got berries. Like it's a functioning plant. Got to have something it's for the mantle. You got to have You're something right. on the mantle. It yeah. functions. It is great for the mantle, Josh. Yes. Great. Point. Mm-hmm. I do a nice little Christmas mantle every year. Mm-hmm. Oh, do mm-hmm. you now? I do, and I use. I bet it's so fancy. My father-in-law and mother-in-law shout out. Uh, they're actually watching my kids right now, so oh, thank you for bless that. Them. Bless uh, them. Yes, and um, <laughs> they grow Nandina across the front of their house. And last year, we coll- they actually collected for me a whole bunch of Nandina berries, and they went across the mantle with some Christmas lights and some greenery. Oh, y'all. I bet it was so fancy. It was you fancy. Could stalk up some of the dried grasses, Did make see? them stalk, and, and, and pull them together and pull mm-hmm. it. Well, pull you know, some perhaps, this way, some that way. It perhaps says, as we get more into that season, Season, we'll mm-hmm. talk about doing some uh, cut table arrangements oh, or uh-huh. uh, making some wreaths with uh, with some things that you have around the house. So, you know, there's a yeah. lot of things you can do that will really look excellent. I personally love magnolia foliage yes. as a wreath. Mm-hmm. It is uh-huh. gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they haven't, g- generally speaking, before Christmas, they haven't been beaten up by severely cold weather. So they really are, they, they look like they have been leaf polished. Still yeah. at that yeah. point. So the, Actually, it's another great thing to use for a wreath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not like the magnolia doesn't give you enough of them to use either. So. Exactly. No. <laughs> no, that's yeah. true. Uh-huh. All right, let's get a couple more questions okay. in. Is it too late to plant heirloom mums that are potted? And then they said thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, no, it's not too late. If you're going to do it, you better do it because uh, sometimes mums perennialize, sometimes they don't. It kind of just depends on the plant. But you need to go ahead and remove all the blooms. The blooms are probably spent at this point after the, the three nights we've just had. They kind of turned to mush. So remove all the blooms, get them back to green, and then plant them, water them sufficiently, and we'll see. Leave some space too, right? Mm-hmm. They get big. Because they get big. They, they can get big, yeah. yeah. They turn into shrubs. Yeah. Help to care for three big pots of succulents bringing in for the winter. So this question is a little bit tricky just because there's so many different types of succulents that we're not sure which ones you're talking about. But generally, if you are bringing them inside, succulents are going to need bright light, bright indirect light. Some like indirect light more than direct. So that's going to be an issue there. But getting plenty of sunlight and then don't overwater them. You'll have to cut back on your watering. Let them sit dry like my horithia I bring in for the winter. I don't water that at all and it actually sits um, in a dark spot. Whereas my echeveria, I will water it a little bit, put it in some sun um, and let it keep growing. But the biggest thing with bringing succulents in for the winter is going to be cutting back on water. The days are short, especially if you don't have a grow light. They're really not going to be getting sufficient sunlight for them to really want to grow. They're just going to want to it. That's pretty much what you want them to do. So really only water them when the soil is very, very dry or the plant will let you know um, when it is. It'll rot. It will rot very quickly. And they it, don't it, like to be inside. And that's the great uh, conundrum about watering is that people mm-hmm. are indoors. They're always looking at their plants and it's especially true with cacti and succulents, but with house plants in general, people tend to overwater them. Yes. Wow. And, out, and we, because they're inside looking at them, I need to be doing something. You need to be doing something like nothing. Like nothing. <laughs> Don't then, even look at them. And yeah. enjoy them. Yes. Uh, and outdoors, it's exactly the opposite. They're Truth. out of sight, out of mind. They are going to need water. But you need to not be forgetting about them. So mm-hmm. that is a great point. I mean, if Watering feeling, is tricky. If you're feeling like you need to water indoor plants, go outside and, do, <laughs> and water outdoor mm-hmm. plants. Uh-huh. Don't forget to unhook the garden hose from the faucet and when in on cold nights yeah. either. So, you've already you know, missed your, it up. You've already, yeah. you've already uh, failed your first test if you didn't do that already. I didn't do it. I did. Yeah. I didn't even think about it, it until this moment. It wasn't that cold for that long. It, it wasn't, wasn't that, that cold for that long. But you, if you tend to forget that thing. I I do. I tend to forget. That's okay. We've got a question about bulbs. I've just received my online order of daffodils, hyacinths, and tulip bulbs, but they are not pre-chilled. Is it too late to put them in the fridge, or can they be planted now? You know, I don't see why you couldn't just plant them now and let the the chill requirements happen through the winter. I mean, we are getting a little bit warm next week, like close to... I mean, we're getting like mid seventies next week. I think like yeah, we will get eighty days. one day. Might get yeah, eighty one day. Like that's a little bit warm, but you know, I'd say keep them in your fridge now until like it's time to plant, which would be you know within the next couple weeks, I'm sure. And then just get them in the ground and let the winter chill them, and then they should they should come up and flower just like anything. Yeah, and the one thing to keep in mind is that if say you already did it. You know, we've had some cool weather. The ground is cooling down, and the soil temperature does not have the same uh, level of fluctuations as does air temperature. So mm. if it has gotten chilled down, it will tend to stay cool even if you have a few warm days in between. So. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I planted my pansies or violas really in pots wow, like three weeks ago I did this. And I put tulip bulbs below the pansies. Of course, you got to. Duh. And Duh. they, I mean, that, like I said, that was three weeks ago. And it was plenty, it's been plenty warm. Um, I have not. There's no tulips that are like popping up th- in my in the pot or anything. Nor so, will there be. No, then not until next spring, hopefully. Which hopefully there will be. There will be. They mm. will come up, and you'll be so happy. So oh. we did get a question about: Is it too late to plant pansies? <laughs> no, no. I sure it's hope got, not. It's going to be soon because we're going to be out of them if you don't do it. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the thing. Landscapers are coming in this time of year, y'all. They buy twenty flats at a time to set out. Right. So we're not going to be necessarily ordering more pansies. We've got a greenhouse mm-hmm. full of them right now. So if you have not done this. This is a great week. Uh, today, specifically, great day to plant pansies because next week we got nice warmer temperatures coming in that'll keep them growing, and then they'll keep blooming through the winter as long as you keep them growing this, you know, going. Yeah. We are fortunate to live in the heart of the transition zone here in Nashville. So if you're a little north uh, or a little south, it's going to be very much the same. We really don't have enough winter here to Unless the ground is frozen, and that's typically only a handful of days, and it's not unusual for us to go years between 
actually having frozen ground. It's the only thing that keeps you from being able to plant. So we, you know, when we when we uh, ask you rhetorically, uh, when you and when you ask, is what? it too late to plant? We say, well, what time is it? Yes, sir. Uh, you know. It's as, it's, as, it's, as, it's important. On? It's as relevant to the time of day as it is the time of year, which well, means and, and you can the, do it any time. And even in those years where we have the ground frozen, it's only frozen a little yeah. bit. It doesn't get down. No. Twi- and you're not thinking eight. about getting out and planting then <laughs> no. anyway. No. I mean, no. When the frozen uh, tundra's out, you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go plant my stuff." I will, I will tell you, <laughs> now, uh, back Perma in the frost. day, back in the day when uh, growing up as a kid and working for my dad, you know, we would get out there and pick through that top two or three inches of ice and plant things, and we never lost anything as a result <laughs> of that. It's not the preferred planting conditions uh, for me personally. And yeah, I, 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 I t- I take uh, exception to it because well, of the trauma. And generally speaking, it turns to mud if you wait a little. If it's frozen mm, yeah. like that and you come out two hours later, it's a top coating of mud. Yes. It's mm-hmm. nasty. So. No fun. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's get one more question in. Okay. When should I prune my phenomenal lavender? Some in my row is gigantic. Hmm. Uh, go ahead and get them trimmed up if you need to now. Um, you know, it, it, lavender is different every year, so it might look a little yuck over the winter time here mm-hmm. soon. If that ends up happening, you can clear cut it to the dirt. If you got a big lavender this year, that means it's happy down below. Yep. So you should have a brand new plant next spring. If you need to clear cut it to the dirt, like I said, do that. But at this point in the game, just like maybe cut it in half, get it back in check if it's if it's too big for you. That's what I got. Perfect. All right. Hey. Mm-hmm. Hey. That gives us uh, the complete picture of what uh, you need to be thinking about. Inside or outside. This week, yes. Yeah. And you know, plant advice for any space in your life. That's what we're all about here. Without any doubt. And you know, we encourage you to subscribe. Yes, please. And that way you'll get a notification when we're live on the air. Uh-huh. Where You can always go to our website on YouTube, GardeningInsideOut.com, and see what we've got to offer on any particular week. Search our uh, criteria, and it'll give you complete information about sign what's up. going on. Yep, so, sign up, share, tell the world, spread the word, yeah. tune in. There'll be, there'll be another it, looming gardening question that we'll explore in depth. Depthly. Or depth. tune into the podcast yes. Wednesdays. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's if you don't, you know, you need to drive time. It works great. You don't have to watch us. Just, Just be smooth. Shortened up. Go. Get your answers really quickly. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Great. From coming to you from uh, the Green Room Studios here at Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Come out to the nursery today. It's going to be a glorious day to pick Absolutely. something up and take it home and plant it. We'll see you next Saturday morning from the Green Room here for Gardening Inside Out. <laughs>